appreciate all you people being on time. That's good, that's good. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started then. Get the show on the road, and it's gonna be a successful class if I do not kick over the chalk bucket today. <laughs> uh, but we'll see. Okay, a little bit about what we are going to cover. As you can see from all the notes, we're gonna go pretty in depth, okay? It's for your own good, so just bear with me here. We've got nine overarching topics, prerequisites like normal. The goal of gymnastics, this is my favorite thing that we're gonna be talking about today, okay? So the whole goal around gymnastics technique. Glide kit versus muscle ups, step by step, how to do your muscle up. Timing, timing is so important on this skill. We need to figure out when we're supposed to do each position, how we're supposed to swing so the whole movement kind of works together versus moving too slow in one area, not powerfully enough, etc., and not being able to land it. Common faults, hip extension and how in the world we produce power, which leads us into hips to bar, kind of the overview, and then we've got specific hips to bar drills we're gonna use so that you can really reinforce and strengthen your hip extension. And then finally, same thing with the transition, kind of talking about the transition as a whole, some common faults that I see. And then we've got three transition drills that you're gonna be able to put into practice in your own gym, okay? Sound good? Awesome. So, okay. Now it's my turn to work. It is gonna be a long hour. I swear I'm not as uh, in cardio shape as I used to be. So y'all gonna have to bear with me. Let's talk about and look at a bar muscle up real quick and address the fact that I am gonna be demoing and using gymnastics bars. So if you guys aren't familiar, this is a pair of uneven bars in artistic gymnastics, okay? They're probably pretty different than what you see in your normal fitness gym. Those steel bars that don't necessarily move, right? Well, guess what? Gymnastics bars are made of fiberglass. They have like an inch and a half diameter and they bounce, okay? Now, just because they bounce, that doesn't mean that skills on here are easier. In my opinion, Skills on the uneven bars are arguably harder because of the bounce. You would think that having that little extra bounce is going to make everything feel more poppy and snappy, and it does, don't get me wrong, but you have to work so much harder on your timing and holding positions so that you don't get off rhythm. You have to control yourself, and we have to control this bar because it moves as compared to the metal bar that you normally find in your functional gym, your CrossFit gym. Again, that bar doesn't necessarily move, right? So you're only worried about having to move yourself in relation to the bar, um, producing your swing, your power, your momentum. You only worry about one thing, you, whereas here, I've gotta worry about myself and about the bounce and the bend of the bar so that I don't get off rhythm, right? Um, so I just wanted to address that because you may see gymnastics bars and think, oh, easier, or, oh, I can't do this technique because I have a totally different bar in my gym. Nope, the whole idea around kips, around bar muscle ups, around the technique, the drills we're gonna do, you can do them on any bar. I don't care what you have, okay? Frankly, I've seen some of my online athletes use low hanging tree branches to do some of this stuff. So where there's a will, there's a way. Don't get caught up on the bar okay because you can always adapt this technique these drills to whatever you have available all right so let's show you bar muscle up what we're gonna talk about today this place is like an adult jungle gym make sure i'm all nice and grippy so i don't slide off on the first demo all right bar muscle up Whoa. Not as young as I once was. Okay, let's come on back. All right, so that is what we're going over today. If you're unfamiliar with what a bar muscle up looks like, we're gonna talk about um, the topics in order. So if you have questions on technique, knees, toes, standards, whatever, we'll get to it, I promise. First thing we're gonna talk about is prerequisites, okay? So for prerequisites, 
kind of like normal. These are important because you need to make sure that you are physically, mentally, even emotionally sometimes prepared to do this high level gymnastic skills. We have to be able to simply hold our body weight and hang from the bar for a minute. It's just, okay, developing grip, shoulder, hanging strength. Can you hang for a minute? Second one is five strict pull-ups. So these prerequisites are pretty high level, right? You should be able to do five strict pull-ups before attempting bar muscle-ups because again, this is a very high level gymnastic skill and we need to make sure that you have first developed the upper body and the pulling strength to simply pull your chin above the bar before we can realistically expect you to be able to pull your body above the bar, right? Chin first, then body. All right, that kind of goes into five strict toes to bar. So some of the key components in our bar muscle up we're gonna talk about is being able to drive the knees up and squeeze the butt. So having a lot of core and a lot of hip flexor strength. Guess what develops core and hip flexor strength? Strict toes to bar. We just call them strict leg lifts in gymnastics. Very common conditioning exercise that we do every single day, okay? Five strict toes to bar tells us that we have developed the hip flexor, the quad, the core, the lat strength to be able to do bar muscle up successfully. Last but not least, five kipping pull-ups. Now I put the kipping pull-up as a prerequisite just because get chalk in my hair just because I want to make sure that athletes who are trying to bar muscle up have first developed that coordination and that body awareness needed to simply connect kipping movements in a row right so what we're doing on the bar muscle up is we are going from beneath the bar to above the bar in this kind of horizontal vertical motion guess what the movement pattern is for kipping pull-ups horizontal to vertical right so the kip swing is a very important prerequisite to bar muscle up. So you gotta make sure that you know how to first connect simple kipping pull-ups before you can realistically expect yourself to be able to do this skill, okay? All right, boring stuff out of the way. Now I alluded to the goal of gymnastics being my favorite topic of the day, okay? Because I've been in functional fitness now coaching gymnastics within there for about three years, which is hard to believe, time flies. And one of the very common questions or comments that I get is, I wanna learn bar muscle up, but don't teach me the gymnastics technique because that doesn't help me, this is CrossFit. All right, let's talk about that for a second. First thing I'm gonna to say to you, if that was your question when you submitted questions about what you wanna see in this class, I'm gonna tell you, broaden your horizon open your mind okay i'm not trying to force anyone into being artistic gymnasts what i am doing is providing you with this technique and these tips um, so that you can apply them to a skill in your sport that was guess what first done in gymnastics okay we're gonna kind of skip things gymnasts pioneered these skills within CrossFit Gymnastics. What is the name of that? Let's say it again. CrossFit Gymnastics. Okay, gymnastics is in the name, which means if we first start by learning how to do these skills the way they were intended to be done in gymnastics, guess what? We can then adapt the technique to fit your sport of choice. Okay, whether that's functional fitness, calisthenics, whatever you choose to do, the idea is learn the skills the way they were intended to be done and then kind of manipulate, adapt that technique to fit the standards of whatever you're doing. Okay, broaden your horizon, open your mind. So now this kind of gets us to the first point in this section. The goal of gymnastics is to find the easiest, most efficient ways to do all of our skills okay that may sound contradictory to you if you've ever watched gymnastics on tv right there are a lot of high level skills you're flying through the air you're flipping through the air and it's all done with really good form ideally right we always have to keep straight legs we have to always have to hold perfect body positions because in gymnastics we're judged on execution how well you can do these skills okay and when we're doing a series of all of these really hard high level skills in a row, guess what? We are trying to find the techniques for each of those skills 
that will allow us to do them as easily as possible so that we are not overexerting our energy and completely burning out during our competitive routines, right? So even though we're, we're judged on execution, we're focused on having good form, I can promise you, as somebody who's been in gymnastics since I was very, very little, that we're trying to do these skills as easily as possible, trying to conserve as much energy as possible. Isn't that phenomenal, okay? Which means these techniques, especially the one for the bar muscle up or what's very similar to the glide kip in gymnastics, you know that this technique I'm about to show you is a technique that I used myself growing up that's going to allow you to do the skill as easy as possible. That's the whole reason behind um, kind of bridging the gap between my artistic gymnastics background and this new functional fitness style of uh, doing these skills, okay? Again, it's not about forcing you to have straight legs, perfect form all the time. Do it like a gymnast. It's about, oh, okay, that's the way it's supposed to be done. Now I should probably pay attention, take a few notes, and then, okay, take some bits and pieces and the general idea and kind of morph it into what I need to be able to do to fit my standards, right? Hopefully that makes sense for most of you. And if it doesn't, I'm happy to answer any questions. All right? You can see last but not least in this section, in parentheses with a little asterisk, we don't make it harder than it needs to be, okay? We don't, I promise. We do it really well, but we do it really well because we find the correct techniques and movement patterns so that we're able to do it really well. We're able to do it easily with really good form so that we get good execution scores. All right? Okay, great. So far, so good. Now let's talk about the kip versus the muscle up, okay? I'm gonna demo both of these for us right now. up a lot today because if you think your metal bars rip your hands easily ooh, you should climb on one of these pairs because they will tear you up all right so like we said glide kip is that foundational kip within gymnastics okay it's kind of the the template the base of what we're doing to try to help create or make your bar muscle up easier all right they look very similar but there are some key differences obviously so first a glide kip oh. all right so let's point out some key things here as you can see my legs stayed straight the whole time I fully extended my body forward brought my toes up above the bar and then I sat up really fast to transition okay we need to do one more one more you're asking a lot okay this is why I coach now not athlete anymore people all right watch the legs that's the biggest difference okay Ugh. it is so fun though Okay, so hopefully you could see my legs staying straight that time. So I kind of came up in that piked position. Now let's look at a bar muscle up. So driving the knees up in a tucked position versus keeping them perfectly straight. Let's talk about the difference now. Kip versus muscle up. All right, there we go. So the kip is a foundational skill within gymnastics. I believe the first level that gymnasts compete the kip in is level four out of technically 11, 11 levels, level one through 10, and then there's elite which is the highest level you see most people on TV competing, okay? Foundational skill, which means the kip, the glide kip is the very first skill 99% of gymnasts do, 
as soon as they mount the uneven bar. So they jump to the bar, they do a kip. It's like a pre-skill to all of our other skills, okay? So even saying that should make you realize that the kipping technique is something that we are trying to do as easily as possible. If it's a pre-skill to our hard skills, you better believe that we're trying to make it as easy as possible. So that's what we're all talking about today. All right, so obviously leg straight, I mentioned that. The kip, don't get me wrong here, I'm just trying to give you a black and white visual, the difference. Prioritizes technique over strength. Do you need to be strong to do a kip? Absolutely, okay? But technique in the kip, so how you jump to the bar, how you extend, how you move through each of the different body positions to produce power and get you over the bar is arguably, for today's sake, more important than strength, okay? Especially as compared to the bar muscle up. So the bar muscle up is pretty specific to functional fitness, right? We always called it, and don't, don't get offended here, the ugly kip, just because like I demoed, the knees are bent, we're not going through those really full, uh, beautifully extended positions like we do in gymnastics. We're kind of cutting off the positions, bending the legs so that we can uh, just get over the bar as quickly as possible, right? And it prioritizes strength over technique more so. It's like I just said, it's because in the bar muscle up, we're not gonna be swinging through the same big positions. They're gonna be like scaled back as compared to what we do in the kip, which means if we scale back our swing in our positions, we're gonna have to rely more on muscles to pull us up and over the bar, okay? So there's the difference between both the kip and the muscle up. Now, hopefully this still makes you realize why we are taking this gymnastics approach to your bar muscle up is because if we can figure out how in the world to control our body doing the gymnastics movement, you're gonna be able to adapt that to how you do the muscle up in fitness, okay? It's the same idea, it's just very small differences to fit both of the standards of each sport, all right? Cool, that brings us to the step-by-step -step breakdown of the muscle up. So as you can see, there's kind of five general steps that we look at when doing the full muscle up. Uh, I'll read them through. I'll show you each one and then we'll kind of continue to break it down as we go. So we're jumping to the bar, landing in that piked position with closed hips. We're swinging forward in front of the bar, pushing our chest forward, opening up our shoulders as much as we possibly can, really trying to hit that full range of motion in the front. Okay. From there, as we begin to swing backwards, you're gonna drive your knees up to the ceiling, which closes your hip angle and really compacts your body position. This is important because this is our setup for power production. So we're trying to compact our body position, close our hip so that, guess what? In the next step, we can squeeze our butt, achieve that full hip extension and produce the maximum amount of power that we possibly can, okay? From there, after we squeeze our butt, we're traveling vertically up towards the ball, we're rising, we're rising, you're gonna hit that point of your ascent where you're as high in the air as you're ever gonna be, and then it is, as fast as possible, a sit-up, transitioning your shoulders, your wrists, your hands over the top of the bar in order to land in that front support, okay? So I know that's kinda hard to listen to uh, without actually seeing a demo, so let's take a look at what each of those steps look like, starting from the jump, the swing, and then getting into the big parts. All right. So first and foremost, you're gonna begin slightly behind the bar, okay? This is important, especially when we're trying to initiate that glide swing because by starting behind the bar, you're gonna catch behind the bar and gravity is just gonna allow you to swing forward. That's what we're trying to do because we're gonna use our glide swing and that momentum to our advantage. This isn't like kipping skills where we start directly underneath the bar. Oh no, we wanna use a glide swing. So I'm gonna jump to the bar, I'm gonna lift my hips and my butt back behind me and I'm gonna pull my toes forward, landing in a piped position. Okay. 
more time. Hips and butt back, toes forward. Boom. What you're not seeing me do is jump into that pike position, kind of uh, rocketing forward. Here, right? We don't want to catch the bar underneath the bar. We want to catch in this position behind the bar. So you want to think of catching and trying to elevate yourself in the air already so that you get a nice big swing, okay? There's step number one. Step number two is pushing your chest forward into a big open arch position. All right, so I kind of want to exaggerate my head and my chin so that you can see I am opening fully into that front swing Shoulders are going to be as open as they possibly can. Chest is pushing forward, reaching that full range of motion in that position. This is important because as long as you are swinging forward as much as you possibly can, hitting that full arch position, we're going to be able to compact you into an equivalent tight position and produce maximum power. If you cut off your front swing, so you do an arch, and we kind of rush it or we cut it off, you have dialed your swing back so much that you're gonna be doing like a strict bar muscle up, okay? We want to swing, we want to move from one plane, the back, the front, to another, because that swing, that momentum, is something that we just get to use to our advantage, all right? So don't cut off your front arch position, move through as full of a range of motion as possible. Make sense so far? Excellent. Step number three. Now we're gonna start driving the knees up to the ceiling, okay? Let me show you what it looks like first. So just coming back into that tight, tucked position where the knees come towards the ceiling, pulling the legs into your chest, all right? So remember, this is a really important step in position that's going to set us up to either produce a whole heck of a lot of power or not very much power, right? So what's happening is I'm swinging forward, opening up my chest, opening up my shoulders. I'm hitting my full range of motion. I want you to think of me standing right next to you when you do this, having your phone right out to the side, and you should be hanging in space in this position long enough that I can easily snap a photo of your big, beautiful arch position, okay? That's what I mean when I say don't rush this part. Pike, swing forward, full range of motion, and when you feel gravity starting to pull you backwards, that's when you drive your knees up to the ceiling, closing that hip angle, compacting your body, okay? Again, setting ourselves up for power production. And let's talk about that really quick. Oh, my kettlebell's over there. You stay there. I'm gonna go grab my kettlebell. Okay. Back. So we're not gonna talk about this as in depth yet. We're gonna get to that in just a couple of steps, okay, especially when you talk about hip spar. But basically, I want to reinforce the idea behind driving the knees up, closing the hip angle in this third step of the bar muscle up. So what we just said was that we were closing the hip angle so that we could squeeze our butt and produce power for our hips to bar, right? Guess what? You are going to be closing your hip angle and squeezing your butt in the bar muscle up the exact way you close your hip angle and squeeze your butt and a kettlebell swing, okay? It all transfers to everything that we do and every skill that you have to produce power for. So let's talk about this for a second. And let's all just pretend that this bell weighs like 200 pounds or something absolutely ridiculous that I have a really hard time swinging. So if you know you have a really heavy weight that you have to try to swing for your workout, are you gonna be moving slow? Probably not. 
are you going to be moving small? Probably not, right? Are you going to be moving loose, like just out of control? Probably not. Hopefully not, right? Kettlebell swings, you're always tight. You're always coming into bigger positions, right? The hinge forward and the hip extension, and you're moving fast. So the size of your positions matter, the speed of your positions matter, and how tight you move through those positions matter in kettlebell swings and bar muscle ups. So if you have a really heavy weight here, hinge the hips, you're gonna squeeze, right? Squeeze as hard as you possibly can, making it explosive, snappy, almost even jerky because you're being so incredibly tight. Well, guess what? That same hip closing to aggressive butt squeeze is the exact same thing we're setting ourselves up to do for our hips to bar after we pull the knees up closed. And now it's time to squeeze the butt, okay? That brings us to step number four, the hip extension, AKA the hips to bar. All right, so we've jumped to the bar, landed in a pike, swung forward into a big arch position, hit that full range of motion. As gravity is pulling us backwards, we drive the knees up and now we're about to squeeze the butt, okay? All right, I'm gonna show you what it looks like and then we're gonna look at the transition and talk about timing, okay? All right, jump into a pike, swing into an arch, be patient, full range of motion, lift the knees up, squeeze the butt. And you got yourself a hips to bar, okay? You should actually be trying to make contact, as you can see with my chalk lines, contact, actual contact between your hips touching your bar, no matter where you are, what you're using. Because the goal behind the hips to bar is to get your body as close to the bar as possible before adding in that transition. So that our upper body, our shoulders, have a shorter distance they have to travel to land on top of the bar, okay? If we have a really weak hips to bar, right? My body stayed all the way down here, right? If I didn't use my butt at all, it'd be all the way down here. That is a really long way that my torso has to travel in order to get into a front support on top of the bar, right? I'm making it way harder than it needs to be. The less swing you have, the smaller the positions you move through, the more strict your muscle up will be. The more strict your muscle up is, the harder it's going to be. So you wanna think of moving through big positions, move fast and move tight to produce maximum power, okay? Let me show you hips to bar one more time. Whee! There. Somebody asked, do the arms stay straight? Arms definitely stay straight. But we'll talk about that in point number eight, the transition. Okay, so don't you worry about that. Not yet, stay with me. Okay, so that brings us to adding in the transition, which is essentially like a sit up to land on top of the bar, okay? But before we go in depth on transitions, we got to still talk about the first half of this movement. Well, we just did the hips to bar, okay? because the hips to bar is what sets you up for success or failure in your muscle up. Timing is a huge part of that. So a lot of athletes struggle with getting their timing of each of these positions and the swing correct because it can be really confusing at, at first and it's really difficult and it takes a lot of just practice, okay? So, what I mean about timing is if you're someone who finds yourself in your bar muscle ups, you swing forward, you have a big leg drive, you squeeze your butt, but you're always going like this to transition and like you're being sucked backwards from behind the bar. Raise your hand. How many of that, how many uh, of you does that? Okay. Probably a lot, right? If you feel yourself being sucked behind the bar, 
That means, I guarantee you, without even seeing you do it, your timing is off. Your timing is too late, okay? So what I mean by too late brings us to the different forces of nature that we have to consider, okay? Gravity plays a huge part in our timing. So let's kind of talk through the bar muscle up, what's exactly happening. So by swinging forward, we're creating forward momentum, right? We've got that force, that momentum bringing us forward. Well, we hit that full range of motion, that momentum stops, and guess what? Because gravity is a thing, it's gonna suck us backwards so that we start swinging backwards, right? Into that tucked position. So you need to make sure you're considering that backward force that your swing is producing, pulling you backwards, okay? But guess what, that's not the only force we need to consider. The second force that we need to consider is producing power. So your butt squeeze, your hip extension, where we're trying to get as close to the bar in that hips to bar, right? So we, gravity is pulling us backwards while we are trying to go vertical, right? So we have a backwards force and we have a self-produced vertical force here. So here and here, okay? Now how does that translate to timing? It means that steps one, two, three, four, so literally your hips to bar has to be done. You have to move through each of those positions in front of the bar. So pretend there's imagine, an imaginary wall right here underneath the pull-up bar. We've got the front plane in front of the bar, and we've got the back plane behind the bar, okay? Front, back. We need to do our hips to bar. Forward swing, knees, butt in front of the bar, because guess what? Gravity is taking our whole body, our whole movement, and constantly pulling us backwards, which means there's a constant force bringing us backwards. So if you wait and you hesitate too long before squeezing your butt for the hips to bar, guess what? You, maybe you lift your knees right here, then you're swinging back and you, you squeeze your butt right underneath the bar. Well, guess what? Gravity's still pulling you backwards, which means by the time it's, uh, you're ready to transition, you're already behind the bar, right? That's too late. You're never going to be able to land. So you have to think of swinging forward here. So see, I'm in front of the bar. As you hit that full range of motion, it is fast between the knees and the butt steps, okay? Full range of motion here. As you swing back, it's knees and then immediately butt so that you're essentially attempting your hips to butt while your body is still right here. That way, right here, we are initiating that vertical rise as gravity is still pulling us backwards. And guess what? You're gonna land exactly on the bar where you need to, to be able to transition as easily as possible, okay? Doesn't that make so much sense now? So if you're that person who just can't seem to land because you're going backwards, 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 you can't transition forward, it's because your timing is too late. You gotta do it sooner. Swing forward, knees, butt, land perfectly underneath the bar, okay? Are there any questions on that? I know that that can kind of be, it, it takes a second to visualize. I understand for sure, but it's so, so, so important because timing is so much of this skill. It's incredibly important. All right, so that kind of brings us to our first point now. You have to be sharp. You have to be explosive in these movements. The bar muscle up is a skill you can more so associate it to a PR or max effort snatch. When you're going for a max snatch, you're not gonna be sitting there thinking about every little step that you have to do and trying to do it perfectly and gracefully, right? No, you're gonna get down on that bar and you're gonna rip it off as hard as you can because you're trying to be explosive because you're just trying to move that weight. To some degree, for fitness athletes who are learning bar muscle ups, you have to do the same thing. Don't try to make your bar muscle ups look pretty right now. Aesthetics, the grace, the fluidity of these movements comes later with time and with practice, okay? Try to be explosive, sharp, snappy, jerky even because you're moving so tight and, and so quickly and so powerfully and that's how we're gonna get on top of the bar, all right? 
Sound good? Okay. Whew, it is warm. Number six, let's talk about common faults. So four common faults that these are fun to talk about. All right. Number one, attempting bar muscle ups too soon. Too soon. Maybe you're not able to do the prerequisites yet. You shouldn't be doing these. Maybe you don't really understand what the skill is because you haven't joined my Brazil training club online training yet, or you just have no idea what you're exactly supposed to do, but you want to try it anyways. Don't do it. It's not going to go well. Second one is no hips. So for those athletes who try to swing and try to lift their legs, but they end up skipping the hip extension part, they lift the legs and then just try to pull with their arms. Not gonna happen or it's not gonna be easy. Pulling too early. So maybe you do have some hips, but you don't allow yourself to take full advantage of that hip extension before trying to pull your chest into the bar, making it look like this really wonky pull up, right? Last but not least, most common fault, not committing to the skill, okay? Not using your brain and focusing on what you're doing. Meaning, you know how in the last section about timing, we just talked about how this has to be explosive. Your bar muscle up, especially when you're learning, has to be very similar in aggressiveness as a max snatch. Well, guess what? If you make a bar muscle up and you're saying, oh, well, I just can't do it again, I would bet you a hundred bucks right now that your issue is not anything physically related. It's all in your head. It's because you're not committing to the skill like you were when you were in that survival mode and you just went no matter what to make it, right? Your, your mindset has weakened and you have to strengthen it back up. You have to get strong between the ears if you want to do this skill consistently. So maybe uh, again, using the kettlebell swing as, as an example, you made your first bar muscle up and it's like swinging a 200 pound kettlebell swing ugh, as aggressively and fast as possible. But you did it once and you're like, oh yes, oh, I did it once, I can do it every time now. And then you go back, you're like, okay, I'm good, I can do it every time, ugh, and you can barely move that weight. You're like, well, why can't I do my heavy kettlebell swing now? It's because you're not going into it with the same mindset. You're not trying as hard, you're not putting as, as much effort. And that sounds silly, but that's the truth behind it. I mean, I would say people who get their first bar muscle ups and can't do another, 95% of the issue is just in your brain. It's not committing to the skill, okay? You've got to put in as much effort as you did for that first one that you made every single try. Gymnastics is not about quantity. It is about quality movement. We don't do 50 or 100 of each exercise every day like sometimes we do in CrossFit. We do three routines five routines on a heavy day, five routines, that's it. Which means you better make each of those five routines as best as you possibly can to create good habits within yourself. That's how you become better at gymnastics. Not doing 20 bar muscle attempts a day, but doing a very small amount as best as you possibly can because you're committed and you're focused. All right, good. Okay, that leads us to how in the world do we fix these common faults? So if, if you were looking at those thinking, okay, well, yeah, I don't use my hips or I do pull early, so that's great, you, you found my common fault, but how do I fix it? Well, guess what? We're about to fix it, okay? We're gonna fix it by talking about hip extension and transitions and then by doing a couple drills for each of them so you can reinforce proper movement patterns. All right. So hip extension and producing power, we got into this with the kettlebell swing. So basically the goal of the hips to bar and achieving full hip extension is getting our body as close to the bar as possible so that our shoulders have a shorter distance they need to, to travel, to transition and land on top of the bar. If your hips to bar is weak, you don't get very high up in the air, you're all the way down here, your arms are gonna have to pull you somehow up and over the bar, which probably isn't gonna happen unless you are a freakishly strong athlete, okay? And then at that point, you're basically doing a strict bar muscle up anyways. All right, so you want to compare it to the kettlebell swing. So use that heavy 200 pound kettlebell swing example if you want. When it's really heavy, we have to move through these big positions, we have to move fast, and we have to move tight in order to create momentum and power to swing that bell up as high as you're trying to get it to go, okay? Same thing applies to the bar muscle up. You have to move fast, you have to move tight, and you have to move 
through these bigger positions in order to produce as much power as possible. If your positions are small, you're not gonna produce power. If your positions are slow, you're not gonna produce power. If your positions are loose, you're not gonna produce power. You have to be tight, fast, and big in all of your positions and all of your movements, okay? Super important. So in saying that, we can reinforce hip extension, this butt squeeze with three drills that I like to use if this is you and this is your common fault. So we're gonna do hip extension with a low box, hip extension with a high box, and then evolving hips to bar, which just means we're gonna start with a very small hips to bar and grow it as you feel more strong and more confident, okay? So let's take a look at the low box first and work our way up. All right. So let me show you what the low box hips to bar looks like first. As you can see, my starting position kind of simulates that knee drive, tucked, compact position. We swung through on the high bar, doing the muscle up and doing the hips to bar. And then from there, I was able to jump my feet off the block, squeeze my butt, and really practice getting my hips all the way up to the bar, okay? Keeping the arms nice and straight. <laughs> I'm gonna hurry up. <laughs> There's a birthday party coming soon in the gym. Okay, so low box hips to bar. You wanna try to start with a high box, it's easier, and work your way down to lower, shorter boxes because it's gonna force you to do more work, right? Great, okay, that brings us to the high box hips to bar. So as you can see, we have a high box. Ugh, if I can climb on it, here. And basically, we're gonna start with one leg. I like to use my non-dominant leg, swinging. I like to control my movement by planting my dominant leg, my good leg, on the box. And we're literally just gonna go through the same positions, trying to get our hips all the way up to the bar, okay? Let me show you. All right, so we're gonna pretend like I'm swinging, I just jumped to the bar, et cetera, right? So we're gonna do knees, butt, hips to bar. There, okay? You see how much hip extension I can still practice with this drill? Okay. I'm trying to bang that bar as hard as I can to exaggerate the hip extension. So I guess what? I form that habit within my body, within that movement pattern of this skill, okay? What was the next one? Low bar, low box, high box. Ooh, evolving hips to bar. Okay. So, this is kind of like what I said. We're going to start small and we're going to grow the positions as you feel more capable and more comfortable. So, meaning, with any gymnastic skill, you shouldn't start out immediately and just try to do the full skill. You want to start on a very small scale so that you get an idea and a feel of what it's like. And then as you continue to develop strength, coordination, spatial awareness, you can grow that skill and how big you can possibly make it working up to that Rx or prescribed standard, okay? So let me show you the, the evolving progression of hips to bar. So we're starting small and growing. What you can even do is if you're having trouble jumping to the bar, make sure you're starting with your hands already on the bar because guess what? I can jump from here and I can do the same thing, okay? Without worrying about fumbling over jumping to the bar, okay? So don't overthink it. Put your hands on the bar if you need help. So here's a very small beginner, great starting baby hips to bar. I went through each of the steps. I jumped into a pike. I swung forward, I lifted my knees, I squeezed my butt. It was a hips to bar, but on a much smaller scale. So now that I've done that once, great. I feel so much better. I'm ready to start growing it. So let's get a little bit bigger, try a little bit harder.
Okay, so took my hips to bar and I evolved it. I grew it just a little bit. Did I jump from this baby hips to bar to trying to do the full thing? No, you wanna go in increments, small steps, one at a time, teaching your body how it should be moving during this skill. If you try to do too much too soon, it's not gonna happen because your body's not gonna know what to do and your head and your brain are definitely not gonna know how to communicate what it wants your body to do and it's gonna be chaos, okay? Start small increments and grow until eventually you're working your way up to the full hips to bar, okay? Nice. All right, moving right along. Getting cardio in today. Last but not least, let's talk about the transitions, okay? This is where we're gonna reinforce straight arms. So answering the question about straight arms real quick is yes, you want your arms straight. And that does a couple things for us. Number one, having straight arms gets the lats involved. So especially on that hips to bar, what we're trying to do is rise, allow our whole body to rise to the bar, not just our hips. As you can see, if the elbows bend, usually that means the core has disengaged, the lats have disengaged, and nothing is really working in the upper body or the torso. Keeping the arm straight, you can press down on the bar, which means as you press down, your upper body is also continuing to rise towards the bar, which means your whole body is getting even higher in the air before that transition, right? Plus, bending your arms in the hips to bar creates really bad habit of bending your arms in the first half of that skill, which then leads to transitioning early and trying to pull your chest to the bar too early, cutting off your power and really hitting hard on your rib cage, on your bar, which does not feel good, okay? So keep the arms straight, which allows you to rise as high as possible, taking advantage of the power you produce from your hips, using the lats to keep your upper body rising so that your transition is easier. Plus, you're not gonna slam into your rib cage on the bar, keeping your ribs safe, okay? Win, win, win. All right, so for the transition, let's pretend that we're, we're in that top of the hips to bar position. Our body is pretty parallel to the ground, horizontal. You wanna think of the transition as an explosive GHG sit-up. This is important because a lot of athletes will do their hips to bar, and they get pretty high up in the air, but as soon as they go to transition, it's like they turn the whole lower half of their body off and they just pull the chest to the bar and forget about the butt and the legs and all these really powerful muscles we should be using to our advantage, okay? So let's visualize the GHG sit up real quick. When you do a GHG sit up, your legs are locked in sitting on those pads, right? It's just your torso that's coming back and sitting up, coming back and sitting up. Well, when you sit up out of that GHG sit up, your legs are still at that same level in the air, right? They haven't moved. They're still sitting on the pads. We want to do the same thing when we tra transition in the bar muscle up. When your body gets to that parallel horizontal position for your hips to bar and you go to transition, you want to keep your legs at that level to transition because that shows that your butt is still squeezed, your core is still engaged and working and your body is still that high up in the air making for an easier transition. If you do a hips to bar, you're really powerful, but you go to transition and then you just completely shut your lower half off, your butt goes back, your legs go down to the floor, this has all just become dead weight. And what does gravity do with dead weight? It sucks you down to the ground, which means you go to transition after this beautiful hips to bar and you go hit, ugh. Oh, Katie, why can't I do a bar muscle up, right? It's because you did a big, beautiful hips to bar, produced so much power, but then you got lazy. You have to keep your booty squeeze and your abs engaged after the hips to bar, even through the transition. Think of being tight, 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 okay? It's not tight, 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 okay, die. It's tight all the way up and over the top of the bar, all right? You can't shut your big booty off because this is our power producer. Keeping your butt tight will allow you to continue traveling vertically up and over the bar versus you shut this off. It's like cutting your motor 
and now half of your body is dead weight and gravity is going to get a hold of you, okay? So, point number two, core and butt must remain squeezed through the whole thing even when you land in front support. That's going to be another big one for a lot of you guys. A lot of you guys can do beautiful hips to bar, but I see a lot of issues with the transition and it's because of this right here. You're squeezing your butt, you're producing your power, and then you're cutting the motor. Leave it on, leave it on cruise control, keep traveling up. Okay, so that you're always rising. We just got into that point. Uh, pull the elbows. So if you wanna think of transitioning, if shifting the hands is a little too scary, you wanna think of rising and then pulling the elbows up and back behind you because pulling the elbows will help you naturally shift your wrists and your hands to land over the top of the bar. I've seen a lot of people as well do the big beautiful hips to bar and they go to transition and then their upper body, their elbows, their wrists, their hands don't actually shift, which means they can't land it, right? So their chest is just coming into the bar and then they fall backwards. You have to move your arms, your elbows, your wrists, your hands if you wanna be able to shift and transition over the top of the bar. So in the transition, make sure your elbows are moving to help your hands shift. Now we've got three transition drills that we're gonna go over that's going to help kind of reinforce these things. Um, and then we'll, we'll be all done, like right at an hour, awesome. So let's look first at the jumping transition. So I would say an ideal height for this is having your bar at like sternum height, okay? This bar is a little bit high, but that's okay. It's just gonna make me work a little bit harder, maybe work you a little bit harder. So let me show you what it looks like. Boom, there. Okay. What you didn't see was this. Right? What's the difference there? What's the difference? The first one I did I tried to simulate that same hips to bar, jumping my hips to the bar, straight arms, then an aggressive GHG sit up. Whereas the second one, my body stayed completely vertical, right? I just jumped up and over the top of the bar, which for a beginner is fine. But that transition is not gonna transfer into your bar muscle up because at no point in our bar muscle up is our body completely vertical. Right? So you want to make sure in your jumping transition, you're leaning back, your elbows are locked out, you jump, squeeze your butt, hip extension, hip to bar, lats, push down on the bar, get completely airborne, and then fast GHG sit up, pulling the elbows up and back behind you. Okay? One more time. Lean back. There. Okay? Make sense so far? All right, this next one is my favorite. This one's fun. So we're gonna take that low box hips to bar drill and we're gonna add a transition. So some of you may have seen this video a couple days ago. Let me show you what it looks like. Oh, okay. So we're adding on to that hips to bar. We are starting in this position that simulates our knees up position in the bar muscle up. I'm jumping, squeezing my butt, taking my arms, pressing down on the bar, keeping them straight and locked out to make sure my lats are engaged. And when I'm airborne, then I keep my feet up in the air and it's a quick GHG sit up. Okay, again, just to show you the difference. You did not see this right now. Not the same. This position is pulling too early. That's not gonna transfer into your bar muscle up. Make sure you're jumping up, squeezing, getting airborne, trying to keep your body parallel to the floor. Then quick fold, sit up using the core, pulling the elbows back behind you, okay? Awesome. One more, everybody. One more. And we're going to build off this high box drill. So we're going to take that high, high box hips to bar. And again, we're going to add the transition to make it like this modified 
jumping muscle up, okay? I realize that it doesn't necessarily involve a swing, but it's gonna be great for moving through that general movement pattern so that you start to get an idea of what it's like to go from below the bar to on top of the bar, okay? Let me show you. Birthday party's coming. Okay. All right, so from below the bar, we're still gonna do the same steps. Knees, hips, transition. All right, here, dominant leg is on the box, non-dominant leg is swinging. Here, okay. You're gonna find that it's, it's a little challenging to squeeze your butt as much as we do in a hip store bar, but again, the idea is to focus on doing it and really get comfortable landing on top of the bar, going from up, or going from down to up. Okay, all right. So those are three drills that should help you with the transition. You can practice keeping the elbows straight, uh, shifting with the elbows, the hands, the wrists, so that there's that simultaneous shift and transition with the upper body, all right? Oh man, that's pretty good, 59 minutes. Do we have any questions so far? Okay, awesome. So let's take a brief overview of what we did exactly. Okay, we talked about what you need before you start training. The goal of gymnastics, remember, broaden your horizon. Don't get small-minded, guys. Gymnasts pioneer these techniques, these skills, to be as easy as possible, honest as possible. So take these techniques and evolve them, adapt them to the sport and standards that you need to hit for whatever kind of fitness you're doing, okay? Glide kit versus muscle up. Again, same thing. Glide kit technique, kind of uh, transfer it into your muscle ups. Step by step, timing. <gasps> Do it on the front of the bar. Remember, swing forward, knees, butt squeeze, hips to bar on front of the bar, in front of the bar, so that you land directly underneath the bar. If you hesitate, if you're too late, you're gonna keep swinging all the way backwards, getting sucked backwards by gravity. Remember those two forces, our vertical force that we produce with our hip extension and the backward force that gravity uh, pulls us with, right? Common faults, commit to your skill. Biggest thing here, commit to your skill, put in effort every single time. Quality over quantity. Decrease your reps, increase your effort. Hip extension, power, hips to bar, we had those three drills. The goal is to move fast, snappy, tight, aggressive, quickly to produce as much power as possible to get your body as close to the bar as possible before that transition. And then the transition. Remember, keep those legs at that same level. Keep that body continuing to rise towards the bar by keeping it tight, by keeping the booty squeeze, the leg squeeze, the core engaged so that you go up and over the bar, not up, stall, down. Right? That's going to happen if you let your butt and your legs relax. Keep them tight. Okay? Drills for each. Awesome. We did it. I wonder how much uh, sweat on my face y'all can actually see right now. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. This class will live on my Insta story for 24 hours. If you want access to it, I'm going to be uploading it along with all of my more in-depth notes all of the individual drill videos to my Brazil training club for those members. So if you're already part of the BTC, you're gonna be good. I'm gonna be doing that this evening and tomorrow, so you'll have it soon. You'll be able to watch with all my coaching notes. If you're not part of the team yet, by all means, join us, brazilgymnastics.com. It's gonna be the best $12 that you ever spent because you're gonna get access to everything forever so that you can always watch it and always use it, okay? Plus, I'll be able to help you much more. Okay. We can chat all the time. All right. Thanks, guys. I'm going to go get some water and sit down because I'm too old to be swinging on these uneven bars, even though they always were my favorite events. I will talk to you all soon. Bye.